Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days. For today's second video, day 10 will take us to the 6th of October. And we'll be able to extend that beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles because we're going to try a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video over the next four weeks, which will get us into the second half of October. I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say the first video to see is our 6 a.m. upload. And we'll be live streaming from 8 p.m. Uh, tonight. So I was scheduled to do the uh, live stream yesterday evening, Sunday evening, but I felt a little bit tired after doing the uh, winter update on Saturday evening, and so uh, I knew, you know, I wouldn't be on top form and that for the live stream, so uh, I thought I'd push it back to Monday, and the live stream day uh, is now going to be on a Monday at 8pm, so um, we're changing the uh, weekly live stream from Sunday at 8 to uh, Monday at 8, at least while I'm doing winter updates, so I have Sunday to, uh, you know, have a rest from uh, from from doing the, um, the long video, so uh, I hope that's okay uh, with everybody, I'm still recovering, you know, from, from um, quite a significant surgery that I had, earlier in the year and they cut the neck and also um did cut to the tongue as well to get rid of the mouth cancer uh and it was a pretty big operation it's take, taking me a while you know to to get my energy levels back to where they were before the but we'll get there mind you i'm not getting any <laughs> not getting any younger am i um but never mind uh we'll do the 10 to 14 down and i shall see you live at 8 and i hope that's okay with everyone Right, so uh, we've got two interest areas. I've got a red X here. So uh, that disturbance one with a 17% chance of cyclone formation in the next two and five days. It looks like that's going to become our next tropical depression. Uh, probably. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And then we've also got uh, Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian is now a Category 1 hurricane. Giving maximum uh, sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. So it just made it to category one with a minimum set pressure of 981 millibars and moving uh, northwestwards at 40 miles per hour. Clicking on here and going here, we can see that this is forecast to power up to a major hurricane. Uh, so competition is there by tomorrow. This will be category three by the look of it. Uh, somewhere to the uh, west of Cuba. And they're going to carry on pushing northwards up to Florida uh, again as a major hurricane and impacting this uh, west coast of uh, Florida potentially. Let's have a look. So, look quite serious. Let's have a look at the uh, latest uh, discussion, see what wind gusts are going to be doing. So, yeah, this is going up to Category 4. Category 4 hurricane, up at maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour at its peak. Goodness. Uh, so, uh, just off the uh, coast of Florida there, this is going to be a Category 4 hurricane. Very, very, very severe storm. And, uh, and I'm sure the folks in Florida will be watching this very carefully, uh, I would have thought. Uh, eventually, of course, it moves in land and, uh, and it weakens rapidly, loses its energy. So by 120 hours, it will be uh, into the southeastern part of America and will be weaker by then. But I'm sure the folks on that coast of Florida are watching this with, uh, you know, with a lot of interest and concern. We shall see what happens. Coming back to home, the central temperature is now down to 15.2. So continuing its gradual decline from uh, a very hot first week. We're now about one and a half degrees above average. That's provisional to uh, yesterday, to 25th of September. That will carry on dropping through the final five days of months. It will of the month. It will finish in the 14s somewhere. Where it finishes up, we should wait and see. Um, but probably mid 14, something like that, 14.5, maybe 14.4. Uh, you know, it's going to be quite significant drop. Still going to be some quite significant drops over the next few days. So um, I reckon like mid, low to mid 14s probably. But we should wait and see. We'll find out at the, uh, at the weekend, hopefully, where we come out with that. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble that come with on Swansea today. So red line is third year upper air temperature average for Swansea. We're going to be below average now right way through to the end of September. So that's reason that the CT will carry on dropping. 
into the weekend, uh, we go back towards average. And then next week, we go warmer. So the first sort of week of October, looks like it is going to warm up a little bit. And, uh, and you know, we'll see the temperature pick up a bit. But by the time we get through to the same week of October, we might, we might see signs of a bit of a drop then. Although that, is, of course, is a long way out. And is that same range. Also, unsettled for the next few days. Well, the rest of September will be showery. And then very wet and windy at the end of the week into weekend. So, like, Friday into Saturday. Um, very wet and windy. After that, probably going a bit drier for a few days as we get this warm up. That's probably associated with resource high reaching in. And then for the second week of, uh, of October, might go more unsettled. So, first week of October looks drier and warmer. Second week of October, possibly cooler and wetter. But that's, uh, of course, a very, very long way out. Temperature anomalies from the 26th of September, 4th of October, could be a little bit below average. A little bit cooler than average for the last days of September. Um, precipitation anomalies on the 26th of September, 4th of, uh, 4th of October, are uh, near normal in most areas, but maybe still a little bit on the drier side for more uh, southern places. Latest river map from Earth, North School Dock Net shows we're pulling down northerly winds again today. This has been something that we've seen on and off through the second half of September and accounts for the quite significant drop in temperature that we have seen compared to what we had in the first week of month, when we bring up southerly winds. So if we pull this down, we can see about the northerly. It's originating from quite a long way north, actually. The uh, northerly wind originating from up here. Um, that's properly into the Arctic, and uh, that's coming down into western parts of Europe. So that explains the drop in the temperature. If we pull this around, we can have a look at Ian. Category 1, Hurricane Ian, just there. It doesn't look too significant at the moment. I mean, it is a Category 1 hurricane, so, so it's the same winds are 75 miles an hour. It's pretty beefy, but that's going to power up a lot more uh, when it gets uh, to the west and north of Cuba, I think. And, uh, uh, yeah, so, so that's going to become a very, 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 very powerful storm. Right, so going through chart data, this is how you can make your run, is looking for midnight on Thursday. Low pressure will still be sitting in the North Sea, will still be bringing me chilly north, northeast winds, and it will still be showery as well. And then Friday into Saturday, we turn wet and windy, going to see if that area of low pressure will bring us all the soaking overnight Friday into Saturday. And then into the weekend, another low, quite significant one, runs into the north, bringing further wet and windy weather there. The high pressure trying to build the south-southwest is also trying to get itself going up to that point, which is midnight on the 3rd of October, Monday the 3rd. The uh, UK Met keeping the high pressure at bay, really, and we're still under low pressure. Once that low gets out of the way, we might find then that the, uh, the, the ridge from the Azores High makes its move and pushes uh, northwards. I can't. Looks like that. Again, low pressure will be in the North Sea on Thursday, bringing showery conditions and cool north or northeast winds. It turns wet and windy Friday to Saturday with this area of low pressure sweeping in off the Atlantic. Cool and showery, really, into the early part of next week as well with that area of low pressure. Notice his icons trying to raise the heights around Iceland uh, a little bit up to the beginning of next week, which is a bit different compared to the uh, UK map. That's big day on Monday the 3rd of October. We still not going to settle them. And uh, as I say, there's a bit of a ridge trying to get going around, uh, around uh, Iceland there. Uh, the GFS midnight run showing cool, showery northerly winds and uh, low pressure in the North Sea on Thursday. Uh, gets out of the way and low pressure brings wet and windy weather through the country at the end of week and into the weekend. Then, uh, as getting to the beginning of next week, the GFS midnight run wants to build up the ridge of the Azores High. So that starts to turn things drier and warmer through the early part of next week. Um, much more of an influence from the Azores High there compared to, say, Icon or the UK Met. Nice ridge extending through the country should bring a lot of dry weather. Going more unsettled in the more extent range, goes into the second week of October. This is Sunday night uh, of October. We're back into more unsettled weather again, with low pressure being further, wet and windy weather in from off the Atlantic. So any change towards higher pressure is short-lived on the GFS midnight run. This is how a GFS 6Z looks. Once more, we've got that low pressure sitting over to the east of Gertz on Thursday, pulling in most chilly north and northeast winds. When low pressure sweeps in off the Atlantic, bringing wet and windy weather through the end of the week and into the weekend. 
Uh, early part of next week, we'll find high pressure ridging up from the south into northern Europe. So uh, by around day 10, or just after we're under a big ridge of high pressure uh, then, which will bring drier and warmer weather, but not necessarily that warm. Would depend, you know, on the exact parameters of the atmosphere. With that, nights are getting rapidly longer now, so we could get some quite cold nights. With that, maybe some mist and fog and whatnot. By day, probably quite pleasant, though, as the high pressure is originating from the south rather than from the north. That high pressure carries on actually in the extreme range with the uh, GFS 6S, so it turns into a proper high pressure high pressure fest right the way up to the 12th of October, which would be very much in line with what we've seen during 2022 so far, of course. Um, so, yeah, you know, we wait and see a lot of uncertainty, uh, as always, at this time of the year. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. And drop a comment and let us know what you thought about this and all of our videos. We thank you so much for doing that. GM uh, showing a low pressure again over to the east of the country on Thursday. Over chilly north northeast winds. It's just wet and windy from uh, Friday into Saturday. Still unsettled with another low zipping through there Sunday into Monday. That could bring a renewed bout of wind and rain. And then after that, the uh, GM wants to reach the high pressure from the Azores and turn things a little bit dry and warmer, at least into the south anyway, up to day 10 of over north, remains rather changeable with that. And then finally, the ECM showing uh, the low pressure over to the east of the country on Thursday, bringing the chilly north northeast winds and showery conditions. Then we go properly wet and windy at the end of week into weekend with low pressure to south of Iceland. And then on into the early part of next week, trying to get high pressure going from the Azores, but this low still bring further unsettled weather, particularly to the northern half of the country early next week. And then the ECM wants to start trying to raise heights up towards Iceland and Greenland as well. So ECM also tries to get northern blocking going once more, uh, send the jet stream southwards. And, and with that, we will probably find this low just here. Uh, running in underneath the block, and so that could turn into quite a cool and wet scenario. Um, so that's Icon, and also ECM begin to flirt with some northern blocking around Greenland Iceland by sort of um, 5th, 6th of October, something like that. So we wait and see. A lot of them said there's no sign about the GFS output. Uh, so again, just highlights and search that we always get at this time of the year. Precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tobetshow.com looking showery over the uh, next few days. And then we get into that really wet and windy weather uh, on Friday and into Saturday, properly wet and windy then. And then over weekend, further wet wind and rain, particularly so for northern and western areas, a little bit less so in the south southeast until around um, day 10 when it turns wet in the south. That's just about blocking is getting going around Greenland, of course. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office, getting us to the 6th of October. 19 members of the ECM Ensemble with high pressure ridging into the north and west. You are turning mostly dry and settled in line, I suppose, with what the, uh, with what the GFS is doing there. Uh, 18, including the operational run, showing high pressure up towards Greenland. So we're blocking, trying to get going, and around France, and then in between, we've got lower pressure uh, that's threatening to come in underneath that block. And then 14 just here, with like a mid-Atlantic ridge heading up towards green. That's going to be a bit drier, but will will be quite cool. That will bring the wind in from the north or from the northeast. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. And it gets us to the 11th of October. 13 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the north of Scotland. So it's going to be mostly dry, but it could be bringing like chilly, easy winds. 11 with high pressure just to our west and southwest. So that's going to be a drier option, but it could be a bit showery with northwesty winds. Uh, 9 with high pressure to the west of uh, Ireland, low pressure to the east of the country, and winds coming down from uh, the northern back so um again mostly dry but probably quite chilly uh nine just here another nine very different deep low pressure on top of the country combined with high pressure in the atlantic that's going to be cool and wet and then finally another nine with high pressure just to our south and southwest low pressure to our north and northeast and we have the wind coming in from a west or a northwesterly uh, direction with that. A lot of the options seem to involve high pressure, but where exactly that high pressure is sitting makes a very 
large difference to the feel of the weather and uh, and so it's going to be critical if that high pressure does set up where it ends up. Uh, finally, CFSB2 is a 500 millibar hydrogen orange breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 26th of September to the 2nd of October. The coming week has a low pressure to the east and high pressure to the west, so we'll be quite cool and showering with that, with winds coming in from the north or a northeasterly direction. Week 2 is going to be the 3rd to the 9th of October. High pressure just to our south and southwest. And we bring up quite a warmish sort of southwesterly flow. With that, I would have thought, mostly dried down in the south. Week 3 is going to be the 10th to the 16th of October. High pressure, again, centred to our south. Low pressure to the north. Looks all sort of classic October weather, really, this. Um, rather westerly, rather zonal. Driest weather in the south, most settled in the north. And then week 4, which is the 17th between 3rd of October, sees high pressure pulling away into the Atlantic Low pressure deepening to our north and northeast, so I'll see that turning more unsettled in all areas, and will probably be turning cooler as well as we will start to bring in the wind from more of a northwesterly type direction. It's four weeks away, though, so it's a long way out. And we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, then please you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's hope that this is all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gals Web. It's asked them to subscribe as well. It's amazing. It's incredible. We did hit 14,444 subscribers over the weekend. We've gone past that now. So um, we're on our way up to 14.5k. Of course, the ultimate target is going to be 15,000 subscribers. And maybe we'll get to that before Christmas. Who knows? It would be nice if we could. But we'll have to wait and see. Right. That's it. We're going to be back live streaming at 8. 8 p.m. So I shall see you live then. We will discuss that epic fourth winter 2022-2023 update. We'll show you the trials there. We'll show you some long range uh, as well. So all of that coming up at 8. Uh, but for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.